In a minute, we're going to implement an algorithm to compute the size of a graph starting in any node. And what I want to do is talk a little bit about how we would have done that for a tree and then think a little bit about why this is different. Uh, why do we need to approach this problem in a slightly different way uh, than we did for trees? So here's a tree. And if you remember, with the tree, there's this special node. So you can, you can look at this now with a little bit of broader eyes and you can say, this is just a graph. But with the tree, there's this special node, uh, there's a special, um, sorry, there's a special neighbor called the parent. So every node has a special neighbor called the parent. And if the tree is set up so that if I follow these parent nodes from any node, I'll get to the root node, which doesn't have a parent. And this is, you know, structurally, this is how trees work. And this is, uh, you know, one of the things that has allowed us to perform certain algorithms on, all right? So now let's imagine that this is a graph. Right now, what we did with the tree when we explored a tree is that when we got to a node, we kept exploring all of the edges except the parent. So if we got to this node and we wanted to, you know, tr we wanted to visit every node in the tree, we would visit the left child and the right child, but not go back to the parent. And so by doing this, we always worked our way down the tree. So our recursive algorithms would start at the root. They would go to children, and children were always working us away from the root. But we would never uh, use a parent, right? We would never use a parent link because that would take us back towards the root, and the algorithms were safe, always working down. Now, with, a tr with an actual graph, things get more complicated because I no longer have this distinction between parents and children. Um, instead, what I have are just neighbors. And the problem with neighbors is that I need some way to make sure that I don't get stuck. So let's imagine a naive algorithm that tries to find every node in this graph. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start with the, this node. I could start with any node, right? I could start with this node. I could start with this node. They should all work the same. But let's say I start with this node. First, I visit both of its neighbors, right? So I end up here and I end up here. And let's say that I continue with this neighbor. So now I visit all of its neighbors. So I end up here and I end up here. Now I visit all of this node's neighbors. So I end up here and I end up back here, right? Well, actually I also ended up back here. And you'll see that the pro there's two problems. The first problem is that I need to avoid backtracking. So when I get to this node, I need to make sure that I don't go back to that node. If I don't do that, it's very possible I can get stuck in a loop just between two nodes. So let's say I go to this node's house, this node, you know, I go to this node's neighbor and I go back to this node and then to this node's neighbor and back to this node. And this algorithm will never, will never stop. Even if I can avoid directly backtracking, I still might get caught in a loop or what's called a cycle. So imagine that I start with this node, I go to all of its neighbors, I go to this neighbor first, and I go to all of its neighbors, go to this neighbor first, all of its neighbors go to this neighbor first, all of its neighbors go to this neighbor first. And now I'm stuck in a loop. And if I'm not careful, I can just keep cycling around from one neighbor to another. And so on some level, when I did this with trees, the distinct, the ability to break, there were two things that helped me. First of all, trees are structured in such a way that if I just follow the children, I'll never arrive back at the root. A tree can't have a cycle like that in it or it's not a tree anymore, right? Um, so if I start, well, not right. I mean, that is the definition definition of a tree. If I start at the root node and I follow the children of every node that I encounter, two things will happen. First of all, I'll find all the nodes in the tree. Then the second thing is I'll never return to a node that I've already visited. In a graph, in contrast, if there goes the dog again, if I start with a node and I go to its neighbors and I keep doing that and I go to all the neighbors of every node that I visited, I can very easily either just get stuck between two nodes or get stuck in a longer cycle. And so what I need to do, and what we'll do together as we solve this problem, is I need some way of keeping track of which nodes I visited. And so let me label these nodes. Let's say this is node A, B, C, and D, and E. And so you imagine, let's say I start my, my traversal. This is called draft, graph traversal, visiting every node in a graph. I start at A, and then I go to B. And so what I do when I get to each node is I mark that I've been there. Right, so over here, let's imagine that I have a little place where I'm keeping track of the nodes that I visited. Okay, so I've got, and, and we'll, 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 we'll talk about how to do this in code. 
pretty, pretty straightforward. So I start at A and I check off A. Then I get to B. I check off B. From B, I go to E. I check off E. Now, when I get to E, I try to go back to B, but B's already checked off, so I stop. When I go to, now I'm still at B, I go back to D. Now D's new, so I check off D. From D, I try to go back to B, B's already checked off. I go to C, C's already, and, and, and I check off C. Now I'm at C. So I could go to A, but A's done. I could go back to D, but D is done. And so by keeping this set of nodes, at some point, I can, write, I can write a recursive algorithm so that at some point I'm gonna stop. Because at some point, my recursion at every node will see that all of its neighbors have already been visited. And this could, this could happen in different ways, right? So let's take some of these arrows off. Um, oh, I can't leave, I gotta leave my labels here. Okay, so let's take these off. Let's do it differently, right? So let's say that I had started going to C. So let's say I get to A, I check off A, go to C, check off C, now I go to D, I try to go back to A, but A is already done. I go to D, check off D. Now from D, I go to B. I try to go back to C, but C is already checked off. I go to B, check off B. And then from B, I try to go to A, A is already done, but I try to go to E. E, I still need to do. I get to E, I try to go back to B, B is already done, and E has no more neighbors. So there's a bunch of different ways that control can flow through this graph. But by keeping track of the nodes that I'm visited, I'm always, I can make sure that my algorithm always terminates. So I'm never gonna get stuck in a loop um, and the recursive algorithm will always complete. That's not something I had to worry about in the same way with trees because of their structure. But with graphs, I need to be careful about this.